Hello friends, uh, welcome back to Compiler Hacking. I am walking in a field because uh, before we get to the compiler hacking today, I'm going to rescue this turtle from my dogs. Uh, the dogs, there they are, uh, found this turtle in the garden and uh, put a little hole in its shell. So uh, they are not indestructible. So I'm going to take it down to the creek and uh, let it live for another day, hopefully. Okay, going down to the creek here. We're just gonna put you, where are we gonna put you? Let's put you right here. Leave it, leave it alone. No, leave it. Come on, let's go. Good dogs. Hey friends, we're back from the creek, saved the turtle, and uh, we're gonna work on our garbage collector. Uh, I had already started on the garbage collector uh, off camera and uh, did some progress on the allocation side. So I have a, a, I have a system for allocating memory and keeping track of where those cells of memory are and who they belong to. Uh, but I haven't worked on the mark and sweep phase of the collector, and that's what I wanted to do in this video. So uh, I'll, we'll jump right into it. I'll go over a little bit of how the allocation side works, and then we'll we'll jump right into writing the collector. So uh, I've, I've been looking again at Serenity OS and how they wrote the garbage collector for LibJS, and it's been a fantastic resource. So uh, that's, uh, if you see anything familiar there and you are familiar with Serenity, then that uh, would be why. I've definitely borrowed some ideas. And I wanted to show you how the heap works, how the allocation side of the heap works. So I've already built a bunch of boilerplate. Uh, when you, let's see, let's go to cell, HPP. Um, let's, let's go all the way to value. So value is our base type for every uh, object type in Natalie, which is our Ruby implementation. And value inherits from cell, and cell is here. Cell has a new operator and a delete operator, and that is over here in the CPP file. This is how we do a, a new, when you call new cell, we do heap allocate, uh, and heap is an, uh, a singleton instance. And when you call allocate, we find an allocator of the right size and create uh, a heap block of cells and then return a cell from that. And I'll exp kind of explain um, the layout. So the layout is we have the heap. Um, it's a singleton, so you just have one of them. The heap has many allocators, um, which is down here. We create a whole bunch of allocators of different sizes. And this is something I didn't do the other times I'd try to write a garbage collector. This is something I borrowed from Serenity, which makes the uh, it makes everything so much simpler uh, because it, we don't have to worry about finding a gap of memory that's big enough. We don't have to worry about keeping track of sizes of different things uh, because everything is going to be in one of these allocators. And if I ever get you know an object bigger than uh, 1,024 bytes, then I'll just create another one that's 2048 or whatever. Uh, hopefully we won't get any objects that size because, well, I won't get into that. But anyway, when you say allocate an object of size, let's say uh, 18, well, it's bigger than this one. So it's gonna be, uh, um, it's going to be allocated from the allocator of 32, and that allocator is going to keep track of the heap blocks that go with that. So we'll get back to this. Many allocators, each allocator has many heap blocks. Uh, yes. And then each heap block has many uh, cells. And a cell is the base class of all our value types, value, um, array value, uh, string value and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the layout of how everything works. I'm not going to get into how the allocation actually works. Um, do I want to do that? Yeah, I mean, I guess I could. So heap block kind of uh, is just a big block of contiguous memory and the size is uh, 32K. Uh, I might tune this later. Um, and then however many um, cells of a certain size can fit into that is how many cells that heap block holds. So if it's the cell, you know, back over here where we had an allocator of 16, um, if it's the heap block of size 16, then it's going to hold, um, 
It's going to hold a number of cells uh, that will fit in that 32K of memory. And there's a little bit of math here where we subtract the size of the, the heap block itself because the memory itself is a, do, 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 do. where is it? Oh yeah, it's a cell, uh, it's a basically a character array with no size here. So uh, it's just a, pointer that um, it's going to consume the rest of what we allocate for the heat block. And this is something I borrowed from Serenity. I had never used this before, before align as cell, uh, which makes sure that um, that it's aligned on a cell, like uh, the size of a cell boundary. Uh, so that's very important. And then, and I don't know how much to get into this. Uh, there are people who know way more about this than I do. I am definitely not an expert. This is why this is now the third time I'm trying this. So let's just get right into the mark and sweep phase of the of the heap of the GC. And um, yeah, let's just let's just jump right in. So what we're gonna do here is uh, unmark all cells. We'll capitalize that, and then we're going to um, step over the stack, uh, saving potential pointers, Poten wow, potential pointers. Um, and then we're also gonna step over any registers, uh, registers, saving potential pointers. And then we're gonna walk all, uh, we're gonna say determine which pointers are actual cells um walk the tree of all uh reachable um cells so everything from the stack outward that is attached uh it's not um orphaned in any way then we're going to mark them uh, let's say mark those cells and then we're going to um collect or um uh, yeah, collect any cells not marked and collect meaning just put it back on the free list so that it's, it's marked as free and available. So those are the steps we're going to do today in this video. And I hope you'll hang out as we do it. Uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun and I will probably make mistakes. So, uh, again, I like to say this in every video, if I can, I'm not an expert. I'm not a good C programmer. I'm definitely not a good C plus plus programmer. I'm using C plus plus because it makes me a better C programmer. And I, I want to make a video about that to explain that a little bit down the road, but yeah, if you're looking for someone who uh, is going to tell you this is the way to do it, I'm not the person. I'm just not the person. So let's mark, unmark all the cells. So we're going to say auto, um, I'm just going to do, let's see. I think I have to loop over every allocator, M allocators, and then say for auto um, block in allocator. I think that's a pointer. Yeah, uh, that's a pointer. And then, um, for every cell in every block, then we're going to say um, cell unmark, which I already I've already written that in the cell uh, class. I have unmark here, um, and so I wonder if we should make this. You know, I'm just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll just do it this way. I was gonna make a method on the heat block that could do it because this is like a like a violation of the law of Detmer, right? Where I'm I'm reaching too far in. Um, yeah, let's just go ahead and do that. Let's just let's just do it. So let's say um, down here somewhere. I'm just gonna say void unmark all cells. I like to be very verbose when I'm writing this garbage collector stuff because I get very confused. Say for auto cell and this, uh, that's definitely a pointer. Uh, then cell unmark, unmark. So now instead of this, we can say block, unmark all cells. And we could probably do the same on the allocator, right? We could say allocator, let's just put this right here, unmark all cells in all blocks <laughs> for um, actually this is going to be block and this is going to be block unmark all cells 
Now I can do allocator, unmark all cells in all blocks. There we go. That's a little bit, a little bit easier to read, and then I'm not reaching too far into various objects and assuming too much. Um, okay, so now we're going to step over the stack, and this is the part I always mess up. So just bear with me. Um, the, the way we know the boundaries of the stack is in main CPP, we set the bottom of the stack, we set the bottom of the stack here, which I hate that name. I never know if this is the bottom or the top. Um, does memory grow up or down? And it depends on what architecture you're on, or we're just gonna change this. Let's say set start of stack. Um, actually, let's do it this way. Set in place, uh, substitute set bottom of stack. Actually, I think I can just do bottom of stack to start of stack. Global replace in source and include. Did that change a bunch of stuff? Yeah, so I'm just going to change that to say start of stack. And I think that will make it a little bit clearer for me. So, um, and then also like is the start of the stack low and the end is high, or is it reverse? And I think that also matters depending on what uh, architecture you're on. So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna say if um, m start of stack is less than, oh, and we need we need a little dummy variable, don't we? So we'll say um, int uh, dummy. I'm gonna say uh, void pointer end of stack is the address of our dummy. So that's the deepest we are into the stack. Say if start of stack is less than dummy, then do something else, do something else. So I think I can do like this. I can do it as a character pointer um, at the start of the stack and as long as the pointer is less than the end of the stack, then we're going to increment it by size of end pointer t, which should be the size of a pointer on our system, on our architecture, which would be eight bytes in our case. And you are not happy because that's a void pointer. So we'll just do reinterpret cast um, care pointer here. That way we can treat it, like, you know, we just work with individual bytes and then increment by eight bytes every time. And we'll say cell potential pointer is, um, is what? I guess we reinterpret cast the pointer as a cell pointer. Oh no, it's a, it's a pointer to a pointer. Hmm, okay. Right, because it's a pointer into the stack and whatever's on the stack is a pointer to the heap. So we need to dereference this cell pointer pointer. Yes. So that's the potential pointer. And then we're gonna do the similar thing for this other case, but we're gonna start with the end of the stack and go to the um, start of the stack if it's the other way around. So, um, oh, and this is potential cell. We call this potential cell. So it's maybe a cell. So let's let's create a little vector of these. Vector of cell pointers, potential cells. And we can just um, potential cells dot push this bad boy. And we'll do it here as well. So now are you happy? Potential cells. First function call argument is initialized value. Um, I don't understand why you're yelling about this, but you're not yelling about this. If I get rid of that, you're happy. Hmm. If I make that a void and that a void, and this a reinterpret cast uh, cell star. Yeah, I guess you're just going to be unhappy with me no matter what I do. Um, I think I'm going to carry on as if this is fine. It might become clear to me when something crashes and I get a stack trace why this is wrong, but my brain says this is right. I don't know why the linter 
think this is static analysis. It's not actually running this code, but it thinks that I've done something. I don't know why why this branch of the if would be any different than this branch, but uh, let's move on for now. So um, unmark all cells. I mean, that's kind of redundant, right? I don't need to say that. This one's a little less obvious. So step over any registers, saving potential pointers. Okay, so this one we're going to use set jump. Man, set jump. And um, we need this header and we need this function. Uh, did I? I already have the header because I was planning ahead. Uh, I'm going to say this jump buff here. Goodness gracious. Um, we'll call this a jump buff. Jump buff. Now let's walk over that. It's going to be, you know, 32 bytes or something. I don't know. I don't know how many bytes it is, but we're going to say um, size T I zero I is less than size of jump buff and I uh, plus plus I. And then we're going to um, cell pointer potential cell is. We're going to kind of treat it as a, um, how are we going to do this? Reinterpret cast this as a cell array, essentially. Um, jump buff and then index it with I. And then dereference that. Oh, no, I don't need to dereference because I'm indexing it here. Uh, and then we will push that cell, push potential cell onto the vector. OK, this is probably wrong. This is probably wrong, but we'll just see what we get as I'm going to print out some stuff um, later. OK, so determine which pointers are actual cells. I'm going to say for um, auto potential cell in potential cells, we need to get the block that it goes with. And I've already done the legwork. Thank you to Serenity OS for giving me this idea uh, because of the alignment of the memory and uh, the heat block always being a certain size then we can use a bit mask and I've already done the work for that. So I have a method called from cell. So I can say auto potential block is heap block from cell potential cell. And uh, this does not, okay, uh, returns a pointer to a potential block, you still have to check it. Okay, so that's an important part. So that's why I named it potential here because in our allocator, I think we want to say, did I already do this? I might have already done this. Um, is a heat block. Yes, I made a function called is a heat block that loops over the allocators and checks if it's a heat block. So I'm going to say if is a heat block potential block, then we're going to do this. And we'll just rename this to block equals potential block because I want to be very clear. Now we know it's a block. And um, over on heat block here, we say uh, I have a method for this. Is my cell and in use? Returns true if the supposed cell belongs to the block and it's in use. So we're going to say if block is my cell and in use, potential cell, then we can rename this to just cell is, uh, we know it's a real cell. And um, I guess this is where we want to walk the tree of reachable cells. So we want to do cell. Uh, we need a visitor. We need a visitor. So I already done the work on 
Um, I made a marking visitor, just like Serenity, which uh, marks the objects and visits its children. I have um, made a visit children virtual method that is on every object, and hopefully I got them all right. Uh, uh, let's see, like array value has a visit children that looks like this. So um, yeah, it calls the super class or the super um, method on super on the parent uh, super class. And then uh, we loop over each object in the array and call visit on that. So that's the visitor pattern. Um, very handy. So let's create a visitor, right? Uh, marking visitor visitor. I'm gonna say um, visitor dot visit cell because we know it's a real cell now. And walk tree of all reachable cells. Marking them because these are all reachable. And collect any cells not marked. So we're not gonna do that yet, but we're gonna we're gonna print out all the garbage. So auto allocator m allocators for auto block in allocator for auto cell in block and uh, printf garbage and the uh, yeah something like that and in between here this is another thing I did um, value HPP, I have a GC print, which prints out what the value is. Uh, so like array value, if I go back to array value and go to GC print, this will print out that it is an array, what its pointer is, its size, and all the elements in the array. So we have way better debugging than the last time I tried to write a garbage collector. And I think we've set ourselves up for success, hopefully. So, oh, and I think this is stand stood error, stood error f print. That way we're doing it on the same stream. Is that right? Um, array value, I think. Yeah, I'm using stood error there. Okay. Um, so we have our collect here. I think I'd like to break this out into smaller methods. Oh, the other thing I'd like to do is move this to the CPP file so that we don't compile the whole project every time something changes, because I'm sure we're going to be working on this. Um, just get rid of that for now. This is heap. You're happy, I think. Um, I did have a sweep. Hmm. I mean, let's just move this here, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so let's go to main. And um, somewhere in eval here, where we do the, the, the work, the actual work of our language. Let's um, do heap the dot collect, which as it actually isn't going to collect anything, but it will print out uh, because of this, it will print out the garbage and we can just run make and bin Natalie EP hello. We'll just print a hello string and see what's left over. See what's garbage. Uh, if we did a good job, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's about a 20% chance that I got that right, but we'll find out. Okay. We've got a lot of garbage, uh, actually way too much garbage. So these should, I mean, definitely regex, the class for regex, um, should stick around. <laughs> this is not yet garbage. Uh, actually I think this is garbage cause it got printed. This one is not, um, yeah, so we've got a lot of garbage. So definitely uh, we did not mark anything. It looks like we didn't mark anything at all. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's comment that out and let's go back up here to see. I mean, 
obviously we had this little warning that I was unsure about. I think this is the place we are. Let's just make sure, yo, I'll just say yo here. And um, actually, I don't even need to do that because I'm just gonna print the pointer here. And let's just see what they are. And uh, up here, uh, near the top, let's print off the the cell pointer here. So we allocated this cell, that way we know what the address looks like, and then over here we'll know what we're seeing from the stack. Uh -huh. Okay, we got nothing. We got nothing. Cool. Um, am I here or am I here? Let's just make sure that makes some sense. Uh, I'm in two. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, cool, cool, cool. So like I said, I always get confused about which way the stack grows. Um, Okay, so we definitely have a problem. These are all on the heap and they start with five, six. And these are all, these are all, these look like stack pointers, pointers to the stack. So I definitely did something wrong here. And maybe that's what this warning was trying to tell me. Um, so let me just think through this logically. This is a pointer to the stack. And we, Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I'm just printing the wrong thing. So let's do this, let's do this. Uh, potential cell, auto potential cell is that. Uh -huh. Potential cell. So I was just printing the wrong thing. Let's uh, do the same thing here, just to make it um, consistent. Okay. Okay, these look better. These look better, right? Uh, or do they? They look, they're really long. And they're not right. Yeah, I did that. That is very wrong. Okay, so maybe it doesn't matter about that, does it? Because it was an int. I mean, you can make a pointer to an int. So, okay. Oh, that actually did change it. Why? Is it because... Yeah, if you know what's happening there, let me know. Why, why did it matter if it's an int? Maybe because it didn't have a value? I don't know. Okay. Well, like I said, I um, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, but that seemed to fix it. So if I say, um, like this is something that was allocated and uh, let's let's do this. Let's say, Come on, there we go. Let's, let's just grab a random one and search for it. Uh, it was never found. Still never found. These addresses do look better, um, but I'm concerned that none of them are found in the stack. Oh, that one's found on the stack. Okay, so maybe some of them are just garbage. Yeah. Um, you're still not happy with me there. Don't know how to make you happy. You don't care about auto. Okay, I'm moving on. I don't know why you, why you think it's okay for me to do it here, but not down here. 
just be consistent. Okay, so let's bring back our printfs for garbage and see what is garbage. A uh, whole bunch of stuff that should not be garbage is still garbage. A whole bunch of stuff. Yeah, so it's like, um, let's go here and say, F cell potential cell here. Uh huh. Just make sure these are. Those are a bunch of stack pointers. But we do have some pointers to the heap, I believe. It seems to. Um, is a heap block, block, block. OK. Let's just see, are we getting any blocks? Yes, we're getting some blocks. Um, are we getting any blocks that confirm their cells? Yes, we are. And let's just printf, uh, let's say cell gc print. And let's see what, what we're walking. Are we walking actual things? Oh, I forgot to um, do the new line, which uh, GC print does not actually do. Wow, there's not much there. Not much there at all. Uh-huh. I think we're walking things correctly, but that doesn't explain um, why there's so much garbage. Why is there so much garbage? A few moments later. Oh! Oh. <sighs> Friends, I didn't actually check to see if it was marked. I just printed it. Of course, I was printing literally everything that was allocated. <sighs> OK, where else do I have my print desks? Don't care about that. Goodness gracious. Ooh, that's the whole list. OK, um, this is usable. Not sure why that would have been created uh, or that or that, but it's garbage from something. I don't think that's in use. I think I know where these are coming from. These are when we compile. Yeah, so uh, let's let's pull this up and let's look at um, Build, see, make files generated. One of those was struct.rb, struct cpp, struct rb. Uh, we create a, uh, the source file name here. Oh, yeah, see, we set $0 to the string. But that's only useful for a actual Ruby script. We don't need to do this on these object, these pre-compiled object files. Uh, so that really is garbage. That literally is garbage, and that's fine. You can collect that. Um, be better if we didn't create it because we don't need it. But that's really garbage. Um, these I'm not sure about. Uh, I'm sure there's some blocks that are garbage. String exit status equals. Yeah, I'd like to find that. Where is that? Um, 
exit status equals. I think I need to do star here. Oh, interesting. That's what it was, right? Exit status, maybe without the equal sign. Uh, it's a symbol, it's a symbol, it's a symbol. Huh. These are, that's a string. They must call 2s on that somewhere. And that's in process. So um, process rb exit status. Um, yeah, somewhere we're turning that into a string, I guess. Fascinating. Probably is garbage. Um, cool. Oh, this is so cool. There's another one, 2i equals. Oh, it's an adder accessor. Yeah, when we do an adder accessor, so I bet there's one for pid equals as well. Yeah, there's these. So these strings get created and thrown away. Makes me want to look at um, module value adder accessor. Oops. Adder accessor is here. Adder writer is here. Um, we create the method name as a string, and then we append the equal sign. And then we define a method by calling to symbol on the method name and the method name is no longer needed. So it's garbage. And this is so awesome. Uh, yeah, I think this is actually all garbage. Oh, that's so cool. Okay. Uh, so what do we do next? I guess we'll work on sweeping. Um, if it's not marked, then uh, he, where um, return cell to free list, which I already built, uh, which gets the block that goes with the cell, um, asserts that it is actually a heap block, and then returns the cell to the free list. So I think we can do um, return turn cell to free list cell well let's just see if that um, maybe doesn't break okay didn't break anything I did run make yep main EMV okay so let's get rid of that as well to do to do to do oh this is so great this is so cool um, I don't want to speak too soon, but I think this is going to actually work. <laughs> Return cell to free list. Uh huh. So, what's a good way to test this? Well, let's run the Fibonacci example code um, and make sure that doesn't break. I probably should run the entire test suite. Make sure I didn't break anything in there. And that's taking forever. Um, probably because it allocates a whole bunch of objects um, and we never reclaim them. So just a ton of memory. Um, but we'll fix that because we're going to run a collection um, as needed. So let's let's commit this for now. Let's let's run the test suite. Um, and then we'll commit this. So I'll be back when this is done. This is going to take a while. Well, it looks like we have quite a few failures here. 12 failures. Um, one really big stack dump from Ruby, MRI Ruby. Oh, uh, man. I didn't really expect that. I did not expect that. So let's, um, let's run this one. Oh, fibers. Ooh, I wonder, is it everything to do with enumerators? Did I break enumerators? 
because numerators rely on fibers. It's starting to look like that. Let's do loop test. Let's do loop test. Ben Nelly loop test. Or divine. Really? Really? Hmm. Interesting. Oh, it's not returning. Oh, it's returning a one. Oops, I didn't even notice that. Uh, yeah, so maybe there is a um, seg fault here. Um, GC line 40. What? I thought we weren't even running this code. I guess I'm confused. Um, start is less than end. Or end is less than start. Well, I guess this would be equal, less than or equal to start. Um, hopefully they're never equal. Uh, start is less than end, but earlier, weren't we down here? Whoa, why would it change? Why would it change? Oh, okay. I think I know why. Um, in fibers, uh, we do set start of stack. So let's do let's do this. Um, heap HP set start. Actually, no. We'll do it right here. Printf. Setting start of stack to and then it should set it back to this start of stack was. Um, the main fiber is here. Let's just see what that looks like. We're not calling it here, right? But we are calling it here. Setting start of stack. Oh, setting start of stack to nil. That would do it. Start of stack was nil. Why was it nil? Main fiber. Many, many minutes later. Okay, uh, well, I, I did record it, but I found the problem with fibers. Um, it was a boneheaded mistake that has been there since the beginning. I was creating the main fiber with a null uh, stack bottom stack base and uh it worked <laughs> for for months it worked with the boehm garbage collector because it's magic and it's a black box and i don't understand how it works um in fact i've been having build failures on openbsd probably related to this so i'm really excited i think i found a pretty big bug that i i didn't know how to find before so i'm hoping that's the bug that i've had on openbsd um our garbage collector has helped find a bug. So I only have one failing test here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and commit the um, uh, fix f uh, main fiber stack base uh, thing. Uh, so I just created a new constructor and I pass in the base here. Um, that initialize function was not getting called like I thought it was. So I'm, I'm not gonna get into that because it's not really related to the garbage collector as much. 
But uh, let's see if we can fix the REPL. So this is the REPL test that is failing. And um, the reason it's failing <laughs> is because we, I think it's because um, uh, right here, I think we're gonna say um, uh, print F creating a new um, heap. I think the REPL is going to say this multiple times uh, because we're using DL open to um, to run this code. I think there is no singleton when we're running the REPL. So um, then, uh, test now a REPL. Oh, I guess. Uh, oh, I need to do it this way. Ruby test Ruby REPL test. Oh, I'm so happy I found that bug. Uh, it's been there since since day one of writing fibers, and the fibers worked, and the Bohm garbage collector seemed to be okay with um, having a null pointer for the stack bottom. <laughs> How'd that even work? I don't know. I'm glad we found that. This is just great. Uh, well... Fascinating. I did save that, right? And I ran make. Keep the interesting. Yeah, I saved that. Where did that go? Is it because? Okay. Now let's just run. The REPL directly um, symbol. Okay. <sighs> Start a stack. GC thirty eight. Right here, we don't have a start of stack because we didn't run main. Um, so it had nothing to do with that singleton. It has everything to do with, with us not running main. So do I need to call this somehow? How am I going to do that? Let's look at the REPL. Um, Earlier in the previous version uh, or our previous garbage collector, I had been disabling the garbage collector, and maybe that was why. Um, let's just do that for now, because I think I need to find a way to call this from here, and I'm not interested in that right now. So um, GC disable and the lib is. Build top EMV. Is this extern C? It is. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to stick this here, but I'm going to say um, void GC disable heap the GC disable. Uh, yeah, I guess I need to stick that at the bottom. And this needs to go outside of the namespace, I believe. Um, Natalie heap GC disable, and then we'll have we'll have a GC disable here. Void GC disable. Um, M disabled. This true. Uh huh. Bool M disabled is false by default. And on our um, collect, we will just say if M disabled return. Uh, so let that go. Well, that didn't work out very well. Multiple definition of GC disabled. Oh, okay. So. Um, 
Where did it say that? Huh. Uh, disable. Did I already have... Oh, right, because I stuck it in a header file. Silly me. Um, GCCPP. Let's stick this right here. Uh huh. Does that need to be outside the namespace? I think. Okay, just gonna let the squiggly lines tell me what I gotta do here. Yay! Worked. Okay. Um, let's just look through what we did. Unmark all cells. Yep. That looks good. Good. We have a way to disable the garbage collector now. That's pretty cool. Uh huh. Um, we're disabling it for the REPL. Um, not ideal. I'd like to have it the garbage collect the REPL items, but um, disabling it is fine for now. Um, if it's disabled, we return. We run a collect at the end of the program. That's fine for now. Uh, we, we definitely wanted to collect um, uh, incrementally as the program's running, but uh, we'll do that in the next video. So that's fine. Uh, what I mean to do, 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 do is class. Yep. So I'm going to say um, add. Where is that code? Did I accidentally commit that in the the other commit? I think I did. I think I accidentally put it here. Yeah, I did. <laughs> okay. Well, we're just going to put this all together. No, I don't want to do that. Okay, so stash that. Uh, get reset head. Okay. Um, this can all be done. Yes. Okay. And yes. 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 Okay. Split that out. Um, no, none of that. No, none of that. Yes. Okay. This is what I want. Fix main fiber stack base. That's what I wanted that commit to be. We'll pop the stash. Okay. Fix, uh, let's see, add mark sweep collector, stash pop, amend this. Okay, I think I got it. So I think this is all of the work for um, the mark sweep collector. Yeah, oh, I meant to break that up. Okay, uh, this video is long enough. I will do that in the next video or off camera, but yeah, add mark sweep collector. We'll run the tests one more time to make sure that we get greens all across the board. You know, while it's running, I, I had a thought um, earlier and it just came back to me in right here. When I tried this as an int, I I think there's an alignment issue because the int is smaller than a, than a pointer on a 64-bit system. So I think that was what was throwing off this code where we have a starting point and we go every eight bytes. I think it was shifted by four or something like that. So someone smarter than me can tell me if that, if I'm on the right track or if it's something completely different. Um, but I think that's why int didn't work there. So you have to use a void pointer. Good to know. I never figured out why this warning is here. I think it's, I think the static analysis going on knows that I'm doing something really suspicious, casting a void pointer to a character pointer and iterating over it. Um, I wish I could say, there's probably a way to say, it's okay, it's okay. <laughs> if, you know, like don't lint this line or something. Um, I'll have to look that up because that's gonna bother me, that little squiggly, little squiggly line. I'll try to get rid of that. I should say too that um, once this is all working, this will go away because I don't think there's any reason to collect garbage after the program has run. Uh, I will just let the operating system clean that up because it's gonna be much faster than me having to go through and do that. Uh, but this is just a good start. So uh, in the next video, uh, heap, I 
think somewhere here I had code. Where did I do that? Heap block. Um, percent allocator percent free cells percentage. I had built this. Um, yeah, here. So when we call allocate, if uh, if the free cells percentage is less than 10% free for that allocator, for the allocator uh, of the correct size, then <clears throat> I think we would run heap, um, actually I would just run collect. I think I'd just run collect here, but uh, we'll do that in the next video. I'm sure that will uncover some bugs that we will need to, we'll need to fix. So um, yeah, stay tuned if you're interested in seeing that. Uh, incremental garbage collection phase um, and man I've got so many plans uh, if this works well uh, then I would like to eventually work on compaction uh, you know there's over time a long-running program is gonna have a whole bunch of heat blocks and each heat block is gonna have um, you know sparseness in it it's gonna have uh, holes and I think compaction would be kind of fun a fun challenge to figure out because not only can you you can't just move stuff you know to the front of all of those heat blocks and delete heat blocks because you have pointers out there in the wild that um that need to be fixed so uh that will be an interesting challenge i know the ruby mri does that and i'll just have to research how they do that and then the other thing is uh generational garbage collecting i want to work on that and um which is to say uh you know, some objects are created and de destroyed really, really quickly, and those can be collected right away. Some objects live for the whole time of the program, and there's no reason to start um, crawling the and spidering out from those long-lived objects uh, if they're always going to be around. So I think you, I think the way you do that is kind of create a counter, and after you see the same object so many times, then you put it into a like a a different um, generation to say this is the long-lived generation and I don't need to check it as often I'll still check it but not as often and yeah so those are two things I want to learn about and I want to make videos on those uh, so stay tuned if you're interested in that and um, I'm super happy with what we've got here I think all these tests are gonna pass knocking on the desk uh, and it helped us uncover a gnarly bug in fibers, which I it, I would have had to do some step debugging or something to find otherwise, because the other garbage collector uh, was hiding that from me. And so it's really nice that uh, we were able to find that bug with our own garbage collector. Points out all the boneheaded mistakes that I make <laughs> on a daily basis. Yay, it works. Ah, oh, that feels so good. That feels so good. Um, add Mark Sweep Collector. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for hanging out. I uh, hope that you saw something you liked and hope that you learned something. I know I certainly did. I will see you in the next one. Bye.